You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast, episode number 130. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Well, hey there. Welcome back to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Porterfield, and today we are talking webinars. Literally my most favorite topic to talk about. Beyond all the stuff that I teach, Facebook ads and funnels and content creation and list building and social media and all of that, I always love to talk about webinars the most. Now, the reason for that is likely because I've seen very significant growth in my own business using webinars. I've been using webinars since 2009, 2010 is when I got started. And although I was terrible at webinars in the beginning, I did realize that as I did a few of them and got a little bit better at what I was doing, webinars really put me on the map. And what I mean by that is when you do webinars, you are the expert. You're the teacher. You're the one giving away impeccable free content that your audience can take action with. And that really sets you up as their go-to source. So I quickly became the expert in my niche because I continually taught free content on webinars. Now, another thing that webinars do is they build amazing trust between you and your audience. Because if you do a good job in delivering your content on a webinar, Your audience feels a connection with you because they know that what you promised you are delivering. And that creates some amazing respect and trust, which we all know people buy from those that they trust. So webinars will give you that trust. If right now you feel like, "Mm, I don't feel like I have that connection with my audience just yet. Webinars can change that for you. Another thing that webinars do is that they allow you to sell without being overly salesy. Now, I'm not incredibly comfortable selling anything. However, on a webinar, and I'll talk about this in this episode, but the way I teach webinars is that your program, product, or service becomes the next logical step after the content you just taught. And so it becomes a seamless selling transition when you start to talk about what you have to offer. And so when you really get that formula right, the amount of free, impeccable, actionable content, and then moving into the selling portion of your webinar, when that becomes seamless, I'm telling you, it never, ever feels like you're selling, but you're offering the next logical step. We're going to talk about specifics so that you really know what that feels like and what it looks like on your webinar. Now, the number one mistake that I see often in webinars is just this. The person that's doing the webinar will promote the webinar and promise all these great things that they're going to cover. And they typically say, I'm going to show you how to do X, Y, Z. And then you get on the webinar. And instead of that person showing you how to do X, Y, Z, it feels like the entire webinar is a big sales pitch. First, you're hearing all about them and why they're so great. And then you're hearing about why you should buy their course or their program. And then you realize that all that stuff that they promised to tell you about and show you on the webinar, well, you have to buy the product to get that info. And I don't know about you, but that creates zero trust between me and the person doing the webinar. Can I get an amen? So the reason why you want to be really careful about the formula between your content and your selling on a webinar is because you can break trust really quickly and you frustrate people. And then they're not going to get on your next webinar. So because I see this mistake over and over again, I thought I'm going to create an episode here that helps you figure out what you give away for free versus how you transition into the selling portion and what you're selling. So we're going to talk all about that. Now, I want to tell you that I have a masterclass, a live free masterclass coming up all about how to create your first five figure webinar. And let me tell you, it is one of my most favorite, favorite masterclasses I've ever created. And I get to do it live again. I'm doing a series of them really, really soon. And I'm going to get into a lot more than just how to sell on a webinar. I'm going to take you through the five phases of a webinar system. And why I love the webinar so much is I'm going to take you behind the scenes 
of my entire webinar system and show you examples, images, emails, slide decks, all that good stuff. And the goal is to show you how to put together a webinar system. So you walk away and you think, okay, I get it. I get what goes into a webinar system. I get the different phases. I know what I need to do. I've got my marching orders. And that's what this free live masterclass is all about. Again, it's just me. I don't have a guest on it. So it's just me drilling into all the content, showing you all my examples. I'm going to be doing all of them live. And I would love for you to join me. So all you need to do is go to amyporterfield.com forward slash webinar. So amyporterfield.com forward slash webinar. You'll get all the details inside my masterclass about how to create a profitable webinar system. And I cannot wait to share with you all the examples that I've baked into that webinar. So you really see a webinar system come alive. I hope that you'll meet me there. Okay. So let's go ahead and dive into the topic for today, which is how to sell on a webinar without being salesy. I want to start with designing a webinar that perfectly positions your product or course to sell on that webinar. And first I want to tell you that I have this motto and I teach this inside my own webinar program where every time I get on a webinar, I say to myself, no matter if they buy or not, they walk away today feeling excited, inspired, and driven to take action. And I tell myself that out loud before I get on the webinar to really make sure that I'm coming from a place of service and that I am going to deliver on the promises I put out there when I was promoting the actual webinar. So when I say that out loud, no matter if they buy or not, they walk away today feeling excited, inspired, and driven to take action. I know that I'm going to show up and give them my best content for free no matter the outcome at the end of the webinar. And this puts me in that mindset to make sure it's all about them and not about me. So that's the first thing I do. And so, you know, so much of being an entrepreneur is mindset as well as mechanics. And that's like the mindset part of it. Now, when we get into the mechanics part of it, you know, what goes into this webinar, one of the biggest questions I get asked all the time is how do I know what to put in my webinar versus what I create and sell inside my program? Have you ever had that question? It comes up a lot. And I've thought about this one over and over again, because I want to make sure that my students really understand how to craft a webinar that still gives great value. That doesn't sound like a big sales pitch, but also doesn't give everything away so that people don't want to buy because kind of to back up a little bit, I've seen this done a lot before as well. So let me walk you through it. Somebody does a webinar and that webinar is full of content, like too much content that at the end of the webinar, people feel like, oh my gosh, you just gave me so much. I need to go do all that stuff you said to do. And so I don't need your product. You already gave me marching orders. I've got to do this and that. And you mentioned this and I need to do this and I'm feeling overwhelmed and I have five pages of notes. And so I'm not ready for your program. I just need to kind of like set the foundation with all the stuff you just gave me. That's a very real concern that many of my students have voiced with me and I've seen it done before as well. So now you're probably thinking, well, what the heck do I do? Do I give away a lot of great, free, valuable content or am I going to give away too much and people won't want to buy? And you kind of want to just scream and maybe hide under your desk. Well, let's take a deep breath and let me explain it to you in a way that has helped me immensely and hopefully will help you as well. When you are creating a webinar, the webinar content, before you get to the selling portion, the webinar content is the what and why. And your paid course is the how. So let's just think about that for a second. The webinar content before you get to selling your course on a webinar is the what and the why. And the paid course that you're going to be promoting on the webinar is the how. So the what and the why is what is this big opportunity? What are the possibilities here? And why does it matter? That's the webinar. So let me give you an example. In my Courses That Convert program, I did a webinar. And the what 
was what is this big possibility and opportunity around creating an online course? What is it? And so I explained to them what goes into creating an online course. And then there's the why. Why is it so important? What will it do for you? And usually the why is tied to the results that you promise inside your paid course. So the why, why does it matter, is because you could actually bring in consistent revenue every single day when you have an online course. And instead of connecting with people one-on-one in your consulting services, now you can connect one-to-many. That's the why. Why is it so incredibly valuable? And when you really nail the what and the why, it usually includes testimonials and case studies. So let me tell you about Jane and what she's done after she's created a course. Here's what her business looked like before. Here's what it looks like after, you know, the power of testimonials on a sales page are important, right? Or what I should have said is testimonials on our sales page can be incredibly powerful, but testimonials and case studies in a webinar are incredibly powerful as well, because you get to tell their story. They get to hear it. They hear it through your voice and your inflection and your excitement and then they get to see the results on the screen. So when you're doing your what and why, if you have testimonials, if you have stories, maybe it's your own story, that's where you share all of that. Then when it gets to the paid course, that's the how. So when you do get into the selling portion of your webinar, it becomes the next logical step for them to sign up with you because they already have bought into the what and the why. And now they want to know exactly how do I do it? And that's what's so incredibly powerful about webinars because you get to take them on a journey. So remember the what and the why, the possibility, the opportunity in specifics. So let me back up a little bit more and tell you that when I do my webinars, if you've ever been on one of my webinars, you know that I give you a lot of examples. So I might be explaining what it means to create an online course. And I'm not giving you the step-by-step how to, because that's in my course, but I'm still giving you examples. Like here's what it would look like. And this is what you would create. And here's how you make the decisions on a course platform. And I give you that information but I'm not inundating you with so much that you're making those decisions. Like which platform am I going to use? Which email service am I going to use? What's the course title? You're not making those decisions in the webinar. I'm just showing you that these are the things that you're going to consider when creating a course. So you're painting the big picture with specifics. And I think that's, what's so important to know that it can't just be all generalities in the content portion of your webinar, you've got to give specifics, show them what you're talking about. The more images and the more real life examples, the better. Now to give you a more concrete example, even more so is that I typically create my courses in phases or steps. So in my courses course, there are five different phases of creating your course. So in my webinar, I walk people through those five phases give examples, explain why it's important. I do the what and the why, but I don't tell them how to get everything done in those five phases. That's where the course comes in. So what's important for you to understand if you want to perfectly position your course inside of a webinar is that the webinar content must align with the product or service you plan to sell on the webinar. So you need to decide how can you teach content so that the next logical step is signing up for your course or your program or service? That's the question you want to ask yourself. So starting kind of at the top, that allows you to then easily move into the selling portion because it's just part of the conversation, the what and why you taught for probably a good 40 minutes. And now you're going to transition into the next logical step. So let's talk about the transition. Because the transition between you just were teaching a bunch of free, great, valuable content, and now you're going to sell that transition, it might mean just a phrase or a word, but typically what I see is that there is this weird, awkward energy shift in between the free content and the selling. You might've experienced it yourself. For some people, their voice actually cracks 
or you hear them kind of like shift in their seat and you feel their voice has changed. You feel it or you hear it or something is just not right. I've experienced it myself in the early years, and I've heard it through many of my students' webinars before they actually kind of dig into the content and learn how to do it right. So I'm going to teach you right now how to do that transition right, because when the energy changes from teaching to selling, if it does, it doesn't have to change, but if it changes, your audience feels it. And that level of trust and connection can instantly go away. So it's something you want to be very aware of. And the reason I'm so passionate about this is you've worked your buns off to create amazing content in your webinar. And the last thing I want you to do is lose their focus or lose their connection because you're nervous moving into the selling portion. And so I'm going to teach you how not to be nervous. The number one thing you want to think about is a key phrase, a key phrase that you know you're going to say and it might even be on a slide deck so you actually see the words in front of you so you won't even forget it, a key phrase that allows you to make a seamless transition. Now, the easiest key phrase would be a question. So one of the things you could do is let's say you're teaching your teaching and then it gets to the point that you're going to move into telling them about the opportunity of your course or program. You could say something like, So do you see how easy it is to create a course once you know all the ingredients that go into it? So what I'm doing is I'm asking a question, but I'm also pulling in what they just learned. Do you see how easy it is? Or do you see how powerful it could be? Or you could even, if you want, depending on what you're teaching, you could go with consequences. So do you see what might happen if you don't do X, Y, Z, whatever your style is? But a question at that point could be your, what I call a transition trigger. So you're triggering into the transition, but the only trigger is to you. So you know, okay, here it is. I'm moving into it. A question seamlessly allows you to go right into it. And then you could say, so I want to tell you about an opportunity to allow you to dive in and learn exactly how to do it step-by-step, introducing whatever it might be. So you can go that quickly into it if you have a really good transition trigger, a key phrase. It doesn't have to be a question. It could be maybe a really short story. So something aligned with why you created the product, what the product is all about, some kind of story, or even a case study. So something that really punctuates the importance of moving into the next step. So you need to figure out what that is, but here's the little secret that most people won't tell you. You need to memorize that section. So when I teach webinars to my students, they'll say, Amy, are you reading a script the whole time you're doing your live webinars? No way. That would be way too robotic and too calculated and not conversational. However, there's a few things I do memorize. I memorize my opening. So whatever I'm going to say right at the beginning, I've practiced that a bunch because for me, if I could nail the intro, then I'm off to the races. But if I fumble with how to get started on a webinar, oh my gosh, the whole thing is really, really wonky the whole time because I'm off my game. So I practice and try to memorize the first few, let's say sentences when I intro my webinar. But I also always know what that transition looks like and I practice it. And I say it over and over again so that I get it into my body because, and I'm going to get to this at the very end. Of course, I always have notes for you guys, right? The one thing I wrote at the very end, but I guess I need to say it here is that when you believe in the results that you're promising your students and you know that you are going to get them results, if they would just go through this program, you know, in your heart and in your soul and in your gut that your program could transform their marriage, their business, their personal life, their health, their bookkeeping, whatever it might be, you know it can make a difference for them, then when you sell it, that does not feel salesy on your end at all because you believe that it's their next logical step to get results. So you have to have confidence in what you're selling. I guess that's kind of selling 101, right? But you have to have confidence in what you're selling and that's going to come across in your voice as well. So just something to think about. So you want a transitional trigger, a key phrase. The easiest one would be some kind of question 
that could then lead you into the conversation around your program, product, or service. So that's one thing you want to think about. Now, I also have a few other seamless selling techniques on webinars that won't leave you feeling slimy that you just pushed your course or your program into the face of your audience. Like that's the last thing we ever want to do, right? Well, there's a few things you can do. I already mentioned this one, but I want to really hit home with it. And that is testimonials and case studies. And I know some of you are just starting out and you'll say, I don't have any case studies. I don't have any testimonials. Well, sometimes you are your best testimonial. Maybe you've gotten results for yourself, maybe a family member. I mean, you've got to know that your program works. So somewhere along the lines, you had to have gotten results for you or someone else to know that your program gets results. So you want to talk about that in the content of your webinar, but also during the sales portion, because right now we're just going to talk about the sales portion during the sales portion, quick quotes or stories, or even if little videos that you might have are a great thing to use during the selling portion of your webinar so that you let other people know, look, other people have gotten results and here's what they've said. So testimonials and case studies are a great thing to use during the sales portion of your webinar. Another thing is that specifics matter. Now, when you are selling on a webinar, a lot of the times my new students especially want to sail right through that sales portion as fast as humanly possible. They not only talk really fast like this, but they also only spend five minutes on selling and then boom, they're off to their live Q&A or whatever it might be to end the webinar. And that is doing a huge disservice to those that are genuinely interested in signing up. I mean, if you think about buying online, you're not going to put money down if you don't know exactly what it is that you're buying. And so what I tell my students is that let's say you spend a good 40 to 45 minutes teaching free, valuable, impeccable content. You want to spend at least a good 15 minutes actually talking about your program, product, or services. Now, if that seems like way too much, if you're just starting out at least 10 minutes, but I'd love to see 15 minutes. Now, what do you do in that 15 minutes? Well, that's where specifics matter. You definitely want to break things down step by step and let them know what they're buying. So what I like to do is I typically create my courses in modules. So I'll go through each module. It might spend a minute, maybe two minutes on each module. Here's what you'll do in module one. Here's what you'll do in module two. And I tell them, but when I'm telling them, and this is something I've never talked about before, so really, really important to pay attention to. And that is that when you're talking about, let's say your modules or the specifics of the program, they must still be enticing and interesting and focused on the end results you're promising. And also they must be about them and not about you. So when you're talking about your program, it's a subtle shift, but make sure you're making it all about them because in your webinar, you likely talked about yourself and why you do what you do and your background and all that. And you probably tied in a lot of stories in your webinar to your own business. I do this all the time, but now it is all about them and the results they are going to get. So when you explain your program, your energy still needs to be up. I always say, just smile. When you smile, when you're talking, I just started to smile right now. Hopefully you felt it a little bit. The energy goes up. I'm also standing right now. And so when you're standing doing a webinar, if you can do that, definitely it pulls up your energy and you want to be enthusiastic about your program and the modules and what's included, just as you were enthusiastic about the free content you were teaching. Energy is everything here. So just remember that when you're selling in your webinar. Now, another thing that is really unique to how I teach selling in a webinar is that I always have two different slides, what you get. So I'll say what you get on the top of the slide and I'll tell my students, okay, you're going to get 20 modules, five cheat sheets, six coaching calls, whatever it might be. I just bullet point. This is exactly what you get. And then I create a slide that says what you will create. And so even though you're going to get 20 videos and five cheat sheets and one-on-one coaching calls or whatever it might be, what's most important is the fact that you're going to create a pre-recorded course that you can sell over and over again. You're going to create a launch plan to do X, Y, Z. I'm just making this stuff up, but let them know in detail what they will create, which 
again, ties back to the results you're promising. So the PDFs and the videos and the cheat sheets and all that, it's important, but not nearly as important as letting them know here is what you will create, or here is the transformation that you can look forward to, whatever it might be. That's a different slide. That's a different conversation. So you want to separate those two for sure. Another thing is irresistible bonuses. So in your offer, when you have added bonuses, that's a great thing to add to your selling portion of your webinar. So when you sign up, here's exactly what you're going to get. Plus I've added some extra bonuses to sweeten the pot. So very important. Another thing, and I just have like a running list. I had six of them, but I think I might have a few more. So another thing you want to think about is how you mention the price. So when you're selling on a webinar, first of all, you definitely should mention the price. You should have a section in the selling portion of your webinar where you tell people how much it is. But what's really smart to do is sometimes you want to let them know the complete value of your program. Because if I sold individually different pieces of my program, just the videos, just the cheat sheets, just the bonuses, just the coaching calls. If I sold those all a cart, it would be a whole lot more expensive than me packaging it up and selling it to my students. So I typically show the value and the breakdown of everything that they're going to get. And then sometimes, and I remember having this conversation with James Wedmore years and years ago, where we talked about, well, what would it cost if someone were to hire you and they got to learn from you one-on-one about all the stuff you're teaching in your program? What would that cost? Well, that's a whole different ballgame, right? So you can talk about the different opportunities of what it would cost, and then you can bring it back. So that juxtaposition is actually really important so that people see, oh, this is what the value is. Or if you ever are going to raise the price, this is what the normal price is. Here's what the special webinar price is. Something to show them that they actually, if it's true, that they actually are getting a great deal. So that's something to think about, but you definitely want to talk about the price. And then I know we're not talking about pricing. I did a whole other episode I'll put in the show notes about how to price your course. But in that, I talked about how important it is to do a payment plan. If you have an expensive course, like a thousand dollars or more, I think payment plans are really great. Even if you have a $500 course, I like payment plans. And so that's something that can help you as you're talking about pricing in the selling section of your webinar. So here's another thing that I love. I love when people do live Q and A's, but they're really organized about them. And this helps you sell on your webinar as well. So what I teach my students is that when you are going to do a live Q and A at the end of a webinar, the number one thing I love to see is a timer on the slide. So let's say you're going to do a webinar for 60 minutes, but the last 10 minutes is the live Q and a, and typically I could never do 60 minutes. I usually have to do an hour and a half, but the last 10, 15 minutes is live Q and a, what you want to do is come to the live Q and a prepared and have two or three questions already written out that you're going to start with. So you can say, okay, we're going to go into a live Q and a, but I have a few questions that I know you're likely thinking right now. So I'm going to get to those first question number one, and you go for it. Now, when you're answering questions in the live Q&A, and this is so very important to remember, those questions should all be tied back to the importance of your course, the next logical step for them, and allow you to talk about what they're going to learn, the results they're going to get, and what's included in your course. I typically try not to take a lot of questions that are not related to the course I am selling, at least not in the first, let's say, 10 minutes of a live Q&A. I try to stay really focused on the most important questions to help those that are on the fence understand if this program is right for them or not. Cause that's what's most important of the live Q and a helping people know if this next logical step is a good fit for them or not. So coming up with a few questions to answer objections right from the get go is a really smart strategy. And it offers value to those that are listening that want to buy, but they're not really sure if they're the perfect fit. Now, another really smart selling technique on a webinar is to be mindful of where you're sending your traffic once they're ready to buy from your live webinar. 
So what I do is I actually send people to an abbreviated sales page. And here's the reason why I do that. For all of my launches, I create a long form sales page. You know, those sales pages with tons of information on them that could feel a little bit overwhelming when you're writing them. Well, they convert really well. And so I sit down and I do the work with my team and we create those long form sales pages. But if you are present on a live webinar with me, you don't need to see that whole big sales page because likely I've already gone over 90% of it in my webinar. I already hit on the most important pieces of the puzzle when it comes to the big opportunity, the why, the what, and now I'm offering the how. And so I create an abbreviated sales page, which usually is just the name of the program, maybe an image of the program. I break it up into the modules to tell people what they're going to get. I have the different pricing options, the guarantee, maybe a testimonial, and that's it. None of the backstory, none of the opportunity or the why, because we just went into that in the webinar. And what we found is that when we send our webinar traffic to a long form sales page, We don't see the sales come in right away because people are busy reading the long form sales page, but they don't need to. They already have that information from the live webinar. So the abbreviated sales page allows your potential customers that are right there on the verge of buying to stay out of the weeds, to get lost in more information. We don't want that to happen. Give them only what they need, give them the button to buy, and then they go to the checkout page. Now, just recently... I promoted a tool called Samcart. I'm a huge fan of Samcart and it's the checkout page, but Samcart actually created a checkout page that acts as a mini sales page and a checkout page in one. So if you don't want to create that big, long sales page, maybe it's something you want to do down the road, but you're not ready to do it now from a webinar, you could send people to the sales letter checkout page inside of the Samcart templates. If you're a member, you'll see it in there. And you can put information about your product at the very top. And then the very bottom is all the checkout page information. And that could work really well if you do a good job of explaining what they're going to get on the webinar. So if you want to check out Samcart, you can go to samcart.com forward slash Amy. Definitely one of my tools of choice that I highly recommend. But just be mindful as to where you're sending your traffic from a webinar and make sure, and I've seen this happen with people, so it's important to mention, make sure the URL is really easy. The shorter, the better, the less explanation around what that URL means, the better, meaning you don't want to give a URL and explain why you chose that or why it's complicated. So amyporterfield.com forward slash now or join or just one quick word is usually the best way to go. Or I might say WTC if I'm selling webinars that convert. So just something really easy. These little things make a big difference because think about it at the time that you're going to lay down your hard-earned cash to buy something, especially if your budget's tight, you really want to buy this thing, but you also know it might be a little bit of a hardship or you might be scared to do it because you know it's going to take a big commitment. You know, think of your program and what people are getting involved in. When I think about any one of my big signature courses, courses that convert or webinars that convert, it takes commitment, time, energy, blood, sweat, and tears to get through the program and to get results. It takes your focus and energy. So I never sugarcoat it and make people feel like it's going to be easy. I make them very aware that it's doable if you follow the steps and I let people know I'm going to hold your hand through the process. So I'm going to be with you as it gets a little bit rough in some spots, but it's very doable if you do the steps one by one. But at the same time, it's a commitment. And knowing that, knowing that people go into it feeling a little bit nervous, like, hmm, do I have what it takes? I'm a little nervous. I don't have the confidence to do something big like this. Who am I to be taking this on? All these little voices in our head at the time of laying down our credit card to say, yes, I want it. So your job in the whole selling process of a webinar is to make them feel very confident that this is the right decision for them. And when you believe in your product, that becomes a whole lot easier. So really being mindful of the objections that are coming into their head right now and addressing them in your live Q&A and making sure that your abbreviated sales page or your checkout page is really easy to follow. One of the little tricks I do is I actually create a slide that says, once you go to amyporterfield.com forward slash whatever it is to enroll in my program, here's what you're going to see. And I show the top of my sales page so they know, okay, I'm in the right place. 
That's another thing. People get confused. Am I doing this right? Am I signing up right? This is a lot of money. I'm nervous. So make it as easy as possible for them to go on this journey with you to the point that they have given you their credit card information and they received your welcome email saying you are good to go. You are enrolled. Your job is to make that entire process as seamless as possible. And it starts, if we can kind of wrap it all up, it starts with creating a webinar that is positioned perfectly to sell your program. And that webinar in terms of the content, remember my motto, no matter if they buy or not, they walk away today feeling excited, inspired, and driven to take action. That webinar content is the opportunity, the why, the what. Why is this so exciting for them? What can this do for their life? What does it all involve? And you do that through stories and examples and case studies and cold, hard facts. For example, if I was going to do a webinar about Facebook, I'd start out with the cold, hard fact that social organic traffic is dramatically declining. And that's the challenge. But there's something you can do to combat that. And that's what this webinar is all about. You see what I did there? I made sure that people knew, yes, there's a challenge, but I'm going to take you on a journey right now where we can kind of solve it together. So you understand what the challenge is and why it's so important that you make a pivot in your business to change things around. That's top of mind because I just recorded a big, really, really valuable podcast episode with Mike Stelzner about the state of social media. It will be coming in a few weeks, but that was top of mind because that was kind of the conversation we had. So if I put it into a webinar, that's how I would do it in the beginning to set the stage. And if you set the stage right in your webinar, it's very easy to move into the transition of selling because you know the what and the why has already been discussed. So now it's time for the how. How are they going to get there? Well, you're going to show them what it takes to get the results. And that's your paid program, product, or service. And then, of course, you're going to be very mindful of your transition. You want a transition trigger. You want something to be said that you've memorized in advance that you know how to move from the free content into, okay, now it's time to give you the next logical step without an awkward silence or a crack in your voice or a change in energy. It all becomes one in terms of the content and the selling and the opportunity you're giving them. All of that becomes one when you have a really good transition. There's no need for awkwardness in terms of, okay, now it's time to sell. That's not going to happen if you use some of these selling strategies that I've outlined here in this episode. So just know selling definitely does not need to be awkward. There is definitely a way to do it on webinars. And that's what I've outlined here for you today. Now to wrap things up, I want to invite you to my live masterclass called how to create a wildly profitable webinar. Now, if you go to amyporterfield.com forward slash webinar, you can grab your spot. Again, I'm doing it live. It's coming up really soon. I would love to see you there, but here's why you should show up. If you're interested in webinars, whether you've never done them before, or you've dabbled with them, or you've done a few and you want them to be more profitable, I'm going to be walking you through the five phases of my webinar system, starting from the very beginning with crafting your webinar slide deck. I'm going to show you the three slides you must have in every webinar. Now, this masterclass is really a show and tell. So I'm going to take you behind the scenes and show you what's working in my business. I'll show you the Facebook ads I'm using, the slide decks I'm using, and the emails I'm using as well. Did you know you could double your webinar sales after a webinar if you know how to put a sequence together of emails that get your webinar registrants to finally take action if they didn't take action on the live webinar? There's kind of an art and a science behind it, and I'll explain it all inside my webinar. So get ready to see tons of examples. I'll tell you stories of my webinar missteps in the past and also what finally clicked for me to make them work. So it's going to be a great time together. Again, amyporterfield.com forward slash webinar. I would love to see you there. So finally, the last thing I'll say is when you do webinars, I truly mean this when I say it's like riding a bike. Once you do your first webinar successfully and you feel like, okay, that worked. The technology worked. My slide deck was really good. The transition into selling worked. I converted on the webinar. When it all comes together, and sometimes it might take a little while, a few tries to make it work, but when it comes together, 
there's no looking back. It's a pretty incredible experience to know that you did it and it actually worked and you can repeat it again and again. So I started this episode saying why I loved webinars. They set you up as an expert. They build trust. It allows you to sell seamlessly without feeling salesy. But I'll say one more thing, and that is when you really crack the code on webinars, it's something that you can do over and over again. And that gives you security in your own business. And I think as entrepreneurs, having that security, knowing we have this strategy that we know every time we deploy it, it works. That's a pretty incredible feeling, and I would love for you to experience that as well. So hopefully you enjoyed the tips, techniques, and strategies in this episode, and I'd love to see you on my live masterclass as well. So have a wonderful day, and I can't wait to see you again next week. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com.